Hi everyone, still Mrs. Bustamante, still 6.7 mutations. We're going to start to talk about um, how mutations and variety or variation in populations can be beneficial, right? We talk DNA gives our phenotype and we can have different phenotypes and that's variation, right? So genetic changes lead to this variation and some phenotypes we say get selected for by the environment. What does that mean? Some are more likely to survive in their environment than others, right? And those that survive can go on and reproduce. And so they have more offspring that look like them or like you, if you will, right? That carry their traits with them because they're the ones that survive. So you see their traits become more prominent in the population. We sometimes call this natural selection, right? Because natural selection is just the process by which organisms are better adapted to a particular environment and have a higher chance of survival and reproduction. Therefore, they pass on their adaptations or those adaptations onto the next level. So we can see this in this picture here, but I want to talk about it here, okay? Because one of the easiest to understand examples of this is bacteria and antibiotic resistance, okay? So here's a population of bacteria, and let's say we apply antibiotics to it to try and kill that bacteria, which we do all the time, right? So most of that bacteria, right, you notice these antibiotics will work on, and those antibiotics will kill that bacteria because they're susceptible to uh, the drug that kills them, right? But you'll notice there are just a couple what we say are resistant or antibiotic resistant bacteria. So we don't actually kill necessarily every single bacteria or every single bacteria over time, right? And eventually those bacteria start to reproduce. You'll see some of the uh, main population of bacteria, right, are still around over time. But as we keep um, exposing these bacteria to these antibiotics, right, what do we see? Well, we see over here after time that most of the bacteria now, right, are the antibiotic resistant bacteria. And why is that? Because they had some sort of benefit um, something that allowed them to survive these antibiotics, right? They were resistant to the antibiotics. Here's kind of another uh, diagram that will allow you to look at it the same way. Um, and we see this in real life, right? There are antibiotic resistant bacteria. That's why we have to have lots of different types of antibiotics. Other things we see this in, plants um, with herbicides, they can be resistant to herbicides, bugs with pesticides, right? All over time, we can see populations become antibiotic resistance due to a change in phenotype in, or a variety in phenotype that allows some of them to live. And as those ones live, they reproduce and they are now antibiotic resistant. We also talk about something called horizontal acquisition. Horizontal um, acquisition is really just the transfer of genetic information or the exchange of gen genetic information between different organisms or unrelated organisms. Most of the time we talk about this in prokaryotes, so typically we're talking about bacteria, and it's gonna contribute to genetic variation in these prokaryotic populations, right? There are different ways we can go about it. We're gonna talk about transformation, transduction, conjugation, and transposition, but really they're all just ways of exchanging information. So transformation is really the uptake of what we call naked DNA. Naked DNA is DNA that's not protected by proteins or other molecules. It's DNA that comes from external environmental sources, really mostly prokaryotes. So if we look at this, right, we can see uh, DNA fragments maybe from one type of organism get introduced into some bacterial organism and bacterial chromosome, and it can actually get integrated or kind of chunked in, if you will, into that bacterial DNA. Sometimes it doesn't happen though, too. Uh, this can also happen with something called plasmid, DNA plasmid. We can also go through transformation and get that into um, your bacterial organism. Transduction is the transmission of foreign DNA into a cell. Uh, when a viral genome integrates with the host genome, really one bacteria to another via a virus, right? So let's say you have one bacteria cell and uh, it gets infected with a virus and then it passes it on to the recipients as it goes along and we see that uh, virus integrated into other cells. 
Conjugation is cell-to-cell -cell transfer of DNA. Um, it's kind of like an external bridge that um, connects from one bacteria, typically, to another bacteria. And so small segments of DNA are able to move from one side to the other. Transposition is the movement of DNA segments within and between DNA molecules. So typically when we talk about this, we're talking about um, chromosomes, right? And how we can have things mix, mix up essentially on the chromosomes. We can delete portions, we can add portions, we can switch them over. All of these things we'll call, we call transposition. Um, and actually, we can have this with related viruses too, okay? So viruses, more than one virus can actually infect a cell. And um, when they infect the same cell, their viral genomes can kind of exchange, right? And that can create a combination of a new viral genome that can actually get integrated into the host cell and then also be passed along. The last thing I want to talk about, I know we've kind of talked about before, but what's another way we increase variation, right? Through sexual reproduction. We said the whole point of sexual reproduction was to create variation, right? And certain reproductive processes are evolutionarily conserved across different organisms in order to do this, right? We know about the random combination of gametes, which egg and which sperm meet, and that's random, so that is going to increase variation. Independent assortment of homologous chromosomes right? What order do you inherit them? What chromosomes do you inherit? Again, variety. And then crossing over or mixing up of genes during meiosis also provides that variety, right? And that variety can produce different phenotypes, and those different phenotypes can be selected upon differently based upon the environment. I hope this was helpful, and we'll talk soon.